welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to The Simple Sophisticate. Today's episode is going to be a top five episode from our very first season. It is all about loving food and at the same time, loving your body. Having just returned from France last week, as many of you know, if you've been following me on Instagram and stopping by the blog, I went to France and enjoyed abundance of wonderful food as I went to a cooking class with Susan Herman Loomis. And needless to say, when I travel for food, for any reason, I, while I'm eating well, I'm not saying no to anything that's new or presented to me um, and, and limiting myself to an experience. With that said, I was excited to get back into my eating routine here in the States. And at the same time, when I do eat um, on a regular basis, I enjoy what I'm cooking. I love stepping in the kitchen, making a dessert occasionally during each week. I love eating a nice fish dish with a beautiful sauce, adding some wine, some cheese sometimes too. I don't try to deprive myself. It really is moderation and not counting calories, eating real food, eating it in season. And that's really what today's episode is all about. I'm going to be sharing 10 simple tips in this episode number eight from the first season, as I mentioned, love your food, love your body. And I hope you enjoy it. Um, Some of you may have listened to it many years ago, but if you haven't, I hope you discover some inspiring ways to sincerely step forward and enjoy eating, enjoy the everyday pleasure of eating and not letting it be a guilty pleasure, but simply letting it be a pleasure. Now, before I get into the episode, I wanted to send a quick thank you for a listener who shared a review recently. This is from Art Girl 67 and she wrote, charming me into a simply luxurious life. I don't consider this a self-help podcast, but I find myself making choices in my day that are directly related to things Shannon has taught me here. It is more of a guide to a lifestyle we can all appreciate. I've made Shannon's cucumber soup delicious. I've watched the French series Call My Agent at her suggestion. So wonderful. I now consider my grocery shopping a pleasurable event. I'm learning so much from the podcast. I bought her second book. Shannon is an absolute delight. Well, Art Goal 67, you're review is an absolute delight. And I thank you for sharing the specifics of what you've enjoyed from this podcast, from the petite plaisirs that I've shared, from the recipes and the shows, but also to how going about the everyday can truly be a wonderful, elevated experience. And if you two are enjoying this podcast, every time we get a review that shares what this podcast is all about, it lets future listeners determine if they want to tune in or not. And I appreciate those of you who love this podcast, keep tuning in and share that with others. I really do appreciate your time because I know you are busy. But now let's get to today's episode from the archives. One of the top five episodes from season one, episode eight, love food, love your body. 10 simple tips to enjoy this daily pleasure. The idea of eating flavorful, covetous food, all the while maintaining a healthy body initially seems impossible. But indeed, as I'll share with you today in in today's podcast, it can be your reality. You can sit down and enjoy a meal in the morning and for lunch and for dinner and not feel deprived and still wear those clothes that you want to wear, feel your most confident self in the body that you have and be healthy. It's possible. It's it's something that um, I thought you had to deprive yourself to get to with regards to the body part. And Um, It took a lot of time for me to figure this out, Um, but after reading more than a handful of books that that spoke about research and health and the effect of certain foods on the body and talking with my own doctor, as well as going through all sorts of mistakes um, in my teens, 20s, and maybe a little bit of my early 30s, I have found a way to live this paradox. I'm by no means doing it perfectly, and there's so many more people that are doing it really well. But I wanted to share today these 10 simple ways you can love food and love your body at the same time. 
So on the blog, I've talked about a lot of the things that I am going to share with you on the podcast today, but what I haven't done is shared more personal experiences and um, instances um, from which I'm gathering this information. So you're going to get to know me a little bit on this podcast more than you have on the blog. Now, by no means am I a doctor, so do be sure to talk to your nutritionist or doctor before you do any changes to your diet. But what I hope you gather from today is there are simple ways that you can go about your everyday routine that will, with patience, create not, it's not, and it's not about, it's not about trying to fit into those genes. I know I prefaced it by saying that, but it's really about taking care of this one machine that you have, this only machine you have to make it through your one unique life. And when we shift that mindset, I think it's really powerful. At least it has been for me. It took me a while to get to that shift. I knew it. I've known it, um, since we started talking about biology and science and, and, you know, grade school and, and middle school, but the reality of it, the reality that, life could end really quickly, or it could be diminished if I don't take care of my body. Um, once I realized that in my late twenties and early thirties, it was like a light switch, a light switch. And, and I wish I had gotten to that point sooner, but I didn't. And I'm here now. And, um, anyway, I'd like to share those 10 simple ways to fall in love with food and fall in love without the guilt, um, so that you can go about your business, your everyday routines, and know that what you eat is going to fuel you and help you be your best, but also so you can generally sit down and appreciate what you're putting into your body. All right. So let's get started. Let's talk about those 10 simple ways that you can eat well and feel great in the body you have. Now, in my book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, I talk about the six pillars of lasting good health. And two of those six pillars focus entirely on food. One, eat what you want, but in moderation. And two, choose quality food. So I'm going to dive into those two pillars and really break them down in today's podcast. So number one of the 10 simple ways is to make water your drink of choice. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't have a glass of wine. This doesn't mean you can't have some orange juice in the morning or have milk. This is not to say that, but what it is is almost this default, this light switch that goes off whenever you're thirsty, whenever you're craving liquids, or whenever someone asks you, what do you want to drink? Just immediately have that switch, that default that says, water, please, water, please. (laughs) I mean, it sounds boring, but it's so simple and it has such a tremendously positive effect on your skin, on flushing those toxins out of your system that your body needs to wring out regularly um, so that number one, you don't get sick, so that any kind of tumor or cancer or anything can't even start to even think about forming if it might do so. Now, granted, we have genetic dispositions to various things. This is not to say that, but anything we can do that's in our power to help our body do what it's supposed to do is, is huge. So, and that first thing is to simply drink water. If you want to add some flavor, add some lemon, add some lime. Um, there's all sorts of things you can add to it for a little flavor, add fresh herbs. Um, that's a great simple way of doing it. Add a little mint leaves, very simple things to add a little flavor, but you know, cold water, I can't tell you some of the most, one of the most refreshing things. And it is a simple luxury because often it's free and it's convenient. So not only are you saving your budget, but you're helping your health out. So that is something to just kind of make a default. Like I said, it doesn't have to be your only drink of choice. It's just the default choice, the default choice. Now, in, in one of the habits, and I think I've talked about this before um, on the blog, is when I was reading uh, the body book by Cameron Diaz. And I know it's like Cameron Diaz, she's not a writer. She's not, but she actually did write a decent book and it was, uh, it did make it to the top of the New York times bestseller lif- list in the health section. And she wrote it with the assistance of, um, one of her nutritionists and or doctors. And one of the habits that she uses or follows is this, um, simple routine of going to bed with, um, a bottle of water. So she drinks a lot of water right before bed. And then she has a bottle of water on her nightstand um, or in her re- her bathroom, ready to go when she wakes up to f- to f- hydrate her body. So number one, you're hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. And some people are going, wait a second, Shannon, I'll be up going to the bathroom constantly. Now, I'm not saying this will work for everyone, but it's something that I have found 
has helped me to stay more hydrated because I drink a lot before bed. I drink a lot in the morning and I'm not so parched throughout the day. I'm not unnecessarily hungry. Um, and it's a simple habit. Not that I can't, I'm not, I should be drinking water throughout the day. Absolutely. But this is something that kind of sets that balance, um, that where it needs to be, um, before I head out and get the day going. And then I get busy sometimes the day and I don't drink as much as I should. So at least I know for sure at the end and at the beginning of my day, I've hydrated. So it's just a simple little habit, a little suggestion, something to consider. All right. Number two is to listen to your body. Our body knows what it needs. We just have to figure out the language in which it is communicating with us. We need to figure out what it is asking for. And oftentimes when we haven't been in tune, I guess you could say with our body for a long time or ever, we get frustrated because we think we need just quick fixes or we'll grab cookies out of a jar that have been from the store that are just full of filler and they don't actually satiate or actually give us protein or fiber, something that actually our body is craving. What made me think about this, about what my body wanted was when I was in my, probably in my twenties, most of my twenties, I would wake up in the middle of the night more often than not. And I would want to eat. I'd be hungry. I mean, generally hungry. And because I was somewhat well, I wasn't completely awake, I didn't have the willpower to stop myself. And so I would go and eat whatever was available in the fridge. I wouldn't eat a lot. I would just eat a snack or something, but it was never something that I really, truly needed. Number one, number two, I always ask myself, why do I always wake up and let hungry? Well, now I don't wake up hungry in the middle of the night. And the main difference, the only difference, number one is that I'm feeding my body what it needs and what it wants during the day. So when I go to sleep at night, it's not crying out. It's not waking me up. And I think once we figure out, once we figure out that yes, our body needs a healthy balance of protein, carb, and fats, our body knows what it needs. We, we have to be the ones to sit down and learn to communicate with it and listen to it and listen to it. Most importantly, we have to understand how to satiate our body. We have to understand how to feed it appropriately and give it what it needs. And there's a handful of books I will list on the show notes that will have those books that talk about various aspects of how to fuel your body. All right. So that's number two. Just learn to listen to your body. Learn to listen. Number three, eliminate processed foods. Whether you ascribe to a vegan, a paleo, a vegetarian, or any other particular eating regimen, simply refuse to eat anything out of a box or a bag, something that does not have an expiration date in the near future. If you can try to kind of just step away from that habit of grabbing something out of a bag or a box, you'll be amazed at where that pushes you to go when you're in the supermarket. It's going to push you, for the most part, to the edges, to the aisles, and yes, that those that food is going to expire probably in the next few days, but it's going to be food that's not going to have all those additives and all those foreign different things that you have no clue how to pronounce. And it is a little bit more expensive. And that's, that's the struggle here. And I think that's also what was frustrating for me in my 20s is that I didn't have enough food, um, excuse me, money to go and buy fresh food every day or, or, you know, when I needed it. And so I would buy what I could so that I could eat, (laughs) but I could also keep my budget intact. And that's the tricky balancing part. But, but this is where it actually, you can do it. If you recognize what or how to cook food or make food that is of fresh ingredients and you satiate your body, you're not going to need as big a portion. So you're not going to need as much food. You're not going to need as much food to eat because you will be satiated more quickly. And thus you'll be eating less and it's just, it just kind of, it's a cycle and, it, and it, it's a good cycle if you can figure out how to get on that. So stay away from the box foods, stay away from the packaged foods and try to push yourself out into the aisles, into those farmer's markets, grabbing that fresh food, learning how to cook and your waistline and even your mind will thank you. All right. Number four is something that is going to be a shift for a lot of people. It was a shift for me. And it's simply to reduce added sugars. Don't worry, I'm not going to say eliminate all sugars. It's all about moderation. It really is. But it's being aware of what 
sugar, refined sugar does to our body and our brains. And when you find out what an excess amount can do, you will shift. I actually was talking with my doctor last year um, on my yearly visit and I said, okay, so tell me about the brain. Tell me how I can try to be as healthy as possible. I don't want Alzheimer's is basically what I was freaking out about. But in all honesty though, I was, I was asking her for some advice on the power of food on the brain and the body. And she said, go read the grain brain. And she said, there's, yes, it's, it's, it's a best-selling book. Okay. But just because it's best-selling doesn't mean um, we should read it. Often the best books out there are the ones that very few people find. But she said there's a lot of intriguing science that cannot be dismissed from a biological standpoint, cannot be dismissed. And so I did. I took it. I bought it and I got it, brought it home and it's marked up like crazy, as you might imagine. But one of the things that I really took notice was when the conversation shifted to fructose. And I just want to share with you really quickly. So it's called The Grain Brain by um, da, 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 David Pullmutter. Um, and one of the things he talks about is the effect of sugar on our liver. And this idea that when we, when we eat too much sugar, too much sugar, and remember, we're not just talking cookies here. We're talking pasta. We're talking breads. We're talking cereals. We're talking wine, um, alcohol, right? All those different components, ketchup has tons of sugar in it, depending on if you buy it off the shelf or make it yourself. Sugar is in a lot of different things that we don't even know it's there. And I think just being aware of where the sugar is that we eat is significant. But what one of the things that he points out, supported by different studies, is that two key hormones in regulating our metabolism, diets high in fructose lead to obesity and its me- metabolic repercussions. So when we increase our added sugar, we actually are numbing or slowing down our body's ability to say, you're full, you're full based on how the body is processing that sugar. And again, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, a doctor or a scientist, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating to at least read it and consider it. I, I encourage you to at least read it and consider it um, because it at least puts a pause on, on, wait a second, what am I eating? what's in it and why do I want another piece what is in or not in this cake or cookie or whatever this bowl of pasta that makes me want to eat more shouldn't I be satiated with just a smaller portion there's a there's just certain elements of how the food is made and I think once you figure out that component and how you can throw in some protein and throw in some vegetables that it actually will be a more satiating meal and you'll be able to have some of what you love that pasta that bread or whatnot okay number five we're going to get away from the whole doctor spiel and we're just going to talk about how you're stocking your house so number five is change your options In other words, change what's readily available to you, what's in arm's length, what's in your cupboards, what's in your fridge, what's in your desk at work. What are you going to do to give yourself the best options when you are hungry? Because, I mean, as much as we want to eat at a certain time every single day, our schedules are not going to allow it all the time. That would be ideal and that'd be wonderful, but it's just not going to happen. So we need to be preventative. And that takes planning. That takes some time on the front end, but we'll be so thankful when we have almonds to reach for at work instead of chocolate, Hershey's Kisses or something along those lines. In her book, Fit to Live, Dr. Pamela Peake actually reiterates this power of just stocking our cupboards with the food that we should be stocking it with. When we do that, we make it simpler to choose wisely, which ultimately we're just looking to be filled up. We're looking to be um, our, satisfy our hunger. And as long as we have the right food, our hunger will be satisfied and we'll walk away without the guilt. All right. A few things that I've done, that I have been doing for the last couple of years is that on every Sunday I go to the grocery store for my weekly shopping trip and I pick up some vegetables. Depends on the season, obviously, and depends on how much time I have t- for chopping. But I'll sometimes pick up carrots or radishes, even broccoli, I eat raw broccoli, anything that's just easy to snack on, cucumber bites, things like that. And I'll spend 30 minutes to an hour on Sunday just chopping everything up, putting them in a container in the fridge, and I just grab a handful each day, put it in a baggie, and take it to work. 
It's my afternoon snack or snack throughout the day when I just need something to nosh on that'll satiate me just enough to get me to the next meal. That's one idea. Another snack that I like having on hand is roasted unsalted almonds. Absolutely love them. You don't need that much. I actually have a canister at my work. Uh, it's full of almonds. I think it's really low right now. I need to go stock it up. But it's my go-to after lunch, about two or three o'clock when I'm hungry and I just need something, something. All right, add some raisins to that maybe if you want a little different texture, different, different flavor. Um, but plan ahead plan ahead. And I actually will share some blog posts that I've used in the past um, with some ideas on how to stock your cupboards and your desk drawers um, in a way that's mindful and will satiate your hunger. All right. We just talked about the first five simple ways to not only love food, but love your body. I'm going to take a quick intermission and I will see you on the other side. Away, thoughtful luggage for modern travel. Away creates thoughtful products designed to change how you see the world. They started with the perfect suitcase, crafted with features that make travel more seamless. Now they offer a range of essentials that solve real travel problems so that all you have to think about is where you're headed next. Because getting away means getting more out of every trip to come. Away knows that everyone has a different travel style. That's why they make their carry-on in an array of colors, two sizes, and two materials. A strong yet flexible polycarbonate and an anodized aluminum. The carry-on luggage is the one that I have had the opportunity to use and have traveled with in the past few months. It's lightweight and I love how simple that makes the travel experience. Nothing is more cumbersome when you don't have that much luggage, but your luggage is actually itself very heavy. Aways are so light and they come with an optional ejectable battery to keep your phone charged to make sure no matter where you are in the world, you are able to connect with anyone anywhere. There's also a removable laundry bag to separate dirty clothes from clean clothes. A built-in compression pad helps you pack more in and a range of unique personalization offerings, including hand painting. Even better, away suitcases are built to last a lifetime. But if at any point, any part of your suitcase breaks, Away's standout customer service team will arrange to have it fixed or replaced ASAP. With their 100-day trial and everything Away makes, take it on the road with you, live with it, travel with it, get lost with it. If you decide it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund, no ifs, ands, or asterisks. With their thoughtful design and durability, Away suitcases offer features to help you keep everything organized and ensure you have a seamless travel when it comes to packing what you need. As a simple, sophisticated listener, there's a special offer available for you. For $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash sophisticate and use promo code sophisticate during checkout. Again, simple, sophisticated listeners have the opportunity to save $20 off a suitcase when you visit awaytravel.com slash sophisticate and use promo code SOPHISTICATE at checkout. If you love gardening but are short on time or are interested in gardening but are overwhelmed by all the plant options that garden centers offer, Plant Package is just for you. With Plant Package, the prep work of gardening is done for you. Plant Package selects durable seasonal plants in an appropriate and stylish container and sends just the right amount of soil and plant food, including instructions for assembly and plant care as well. Each plant package is themed and features a wide variety of plants, with past themes such as the May Maisilberry, which featured two strawberry plants and two basil plants, which is what I planted in my garden, and those strawberries are growing great. I just saw some ripening fruit out there, excited to pull them off the vine and enjoy them. In April, they also had the Easter egg hunt, which included three cessation flowers and a ping pong plant. Each month has a different themes. And when you subscribe, you can choose which box you want. Do you want to come monthly, every other month or seasonally, which would be once every three months. That is absolutely up to you. Now, as a simple, sophisticated listener, Plant Package is offering listeners a free first box. Visit plantpackage.com slash simple to choose your delivery option. Then and use promo code SIMPLE at checkout to receive your first box free. Again, visit plantpackage.com slash simple. Choose your delivery option every month, every other month, or seasonal. Then use promo code SIMPLE at checkout to receive your first box free. If you've been considering seeking out a counselor to help you navigate through life situations that you just don't know how to tackle on your own, BetterHelp is there for you. BetterHelp is online counseling that helps connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. 
And now you can get your own help at your own time, at your own pace. You get to schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. They have licensed professional counselors that are specialized in anger, self-esteem, sleeping, trauma, LGBT matters, anxiety, relationships, stress, depression, and family conflicts. And anything you share is confidential. If you are not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. And with 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states, you will be able to find one that fits you best. You can start communicating in under 24 hours, and it's available on desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. BetterHelp is secure, convenient, professional, and best of all, it's a truly affordable option. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to receive 10% off your first month with discount code SIMPLE. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com simple and receive 10% off your first month with discount code SIMPLE. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com simple. Welcome back. Let's talk about the remaining five of simple ways to eat where you can love food and also love the body that it cultivates. All right. So number six is to retrain your mind. And what I mean by that is this concept of eliminating grazing and simply eating the three basic meals plus one snack. Now you may be thinking, well, that's impossible. I don't know what my schedule is going to be like. I don't know if I can. The thing about it is if you eat properly, if you're eating healthy and balanced meals, real food, quality food, not processed food, not added sugar, then you will find that this is very, very possible. It's all about training your mind and your body. And so check out the book Eating Mindfully by Susan Albers, or you can even check out Women for All, excuse me, French Women for All Seasons by Muriel Giuliano. They both reveal and show that this indeed can become your new habit. You can have those breaks between lunch, dinner, breakfast, and still feel you have enough energy to get through your day. That one snack, depending on when you eat dinner, is probably a really good idea. But again, quality food allows this to be a reality. And I found this to be very true, especially if I make sure I incorporate a little bit of protein, fiber in the morning to keep me going to lunch. It's very possible. All right, number seven is to sit down. Let go of the multitasking habit. Put your phone away. I can remember the last time I was at Paris, I sat down for lunch at this beautiful little cafe outside and very cozy, sitting really close to everybody as we do. And it was in the Marais. And I simply had, by habit, I was eating by myself, I had my cell phone out. And I had it on the table and I wasn't actually even using it. I was just put it on the table because I knew I probably would want to use it once I order, placed my order and was waiting for my food because I actually had some notes I had to take because I had been doing a project um, and touring some um, apartments for the blog. Anyway, my waiter, very frankly, (laughs) comes out and says, please put your cell phone away. And as I looked at him and I was like, first of all, that would never happen in America. Number two, I wanted to say thank you. I really did. If we just will focus on the eating, on the people we're sitting down to have a conversation with, so many more amazing things can come out of it. But if we're multitasking, nothing gets our full attention and we don't have any quality experiences. And when we eat without multitasking, we're focusing on the food, we're allowing ourselves to slow down, and we are becoming more satiated because we're taking more time and we're not eating so quickly that we forget what we've eaten. Studies have shown that after 20 minutes, our brain can register whether we're full or not, full or not. But it does take approximately 20 minutes for our brain to register this. And so if we sit down and scarf down a meal in four or five minutes while we're devouring our latest social media on our cell phones, we number one, haven't enjoyed the food, so it's wasted in that way. But number two, it's wasted because we want more and we don't appreciate what we've already put in our bodies. So something to think about. Number seven, sit down and enjoy meals. All right. Number eight is eat local and eat in season. Let's talk about in season. First of all, Muriel Giuliano talks about this in the French Wind for All Seasons, this idea that just because we want to have asparagus in the winter or in the fall doesn't mean we get to have it. In fact, we probably would appreciate it more by waiting for it 
when it comes in season in the spring because it will have more flavor. And when we eat it in season, we're eating our food that has less added extra ingredients and unnecessary sugars to enhance the flavor that doesn't exist naturally. So we actually are helping our health in a variety of ways there. Also, choosing to eat local, for example, going to your local bakery, a lot of the times the breads, check with your baker on this one, but the one that I go to, they don't add additives to their bread. So no, it won't last as long as your house, but you also aren't going to have those extra components that in various studies have attributed to all sorts of things we don't want to put in our bodies. So trying to buy locally to eat in season, actually, while it does take time and it may cost a little bit more money, is actually investment in our health. So something to keep in in mind there. For there was back when I was a kid, for example, with regards to buying locally, we would buy our milk. My mom would buy our milk from a local um, gentleman who had a few dairy cows, and we would get it in a glass a glass gallon, and there would be like three inches of cream on top of the milk. And that would be our milk. And I just remember as a kid, and I don't know how long we did this, but as a young kid thinking, okay, so we get our milk from straight from the cow, but there's no hormones, extra hormones, hormones added into that. And you're getting rich nutrients, which is what you need from the milk in the first place. Um, and it just makes a tremendous difference. And you're also supporting obviously a local farmer, which is not a bad idea either. So something to think about with number eight, eat local and eat in season. Number nine, is to savor small portions. When you slow down, as we were talking about with not multitasking, sitting down to eat your meals, when you slow down, you're actually allowing yourself to truly taste and appreciate the food. Consequently, when you slow down, you decrease the number of calories you consume, and those 20 minutes arrive faster, telling your brain that you're full, so you are not going to consume more. This also allows you to enjoy the company you're with. And you can dive into that conversation. You can also really investigate those flavors that are in the food. I can remember a few times I love sitting down with another foodie, a fellow foodie, and we'll dive into dishes and we'll try to figure out, okay, what what herb are they using here? What spice are they using here? What's that ingredient? And it's like a mini mystery right there at the the dinner table. And you feel like you're putting your Sherlock Holmes cap on. You're figuring out. I know it sounds cheesy, um, but it's kind of fun. And But if you're going too quickly and devouring your food, that's not going to happen. And when you're able to slow down, you can just have small portions because you will be satiated after a small portion as long as it's made of quality food. So something to try, something to think about. Last but not least, number 10 is to fall in love with food again. Food is not our enemy. Going on various diets that restrict you from eating certain foods is something that you will have a difficult time doing for the rest of your life. At least that's been my experience. And if you can understand the power of food, what it does, what it can do for your body and your brain, and if you use or eat too much, what it can do detrimentally to your body or brain, you are enhancing your life. And you're not making food the enemy, you're making it a necessary partner as you go about living the life of your dreams. And in order to live the life of your dreams, you must be at your best. You must be at your fullest potential. And at the core of that is being healthy. And how do you make sure that happens? A big part of that is what you put in your body, as we all know. So something to think about. It is possible. It is absolutely possible to fall in love with food again. So there you have it. 10 simple ways you can fall in love with food at the same time actually decreasing your waistline, improving your health, and ultimately improving your life. None of these tricks are something that as soon as you do them the first day, everything's going to improve. These are things that with consistency, you will eventually see the positive effects that you are searching for. Maybe a couple months, maybe more than a couple months, but it will pay off and it won't be something that can be easily reversed. And in doing that, you've created habits that are established in how to live well. And that really is what living simply, simply luxuriously is about. It's about living well, choosing quality over quantity in all things. And so that you can appreciate and enjoy the life that you are trying to live, void of all the unnecessary. 
All the books and links that I mentioned throughout the podcast will be available on the show notes, www.thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast eight. So if you're looking for those, you can head on over there and find everything you're looking for. Now, stay tuned for this week's Petit Plaisir when I share a simple recipe. We are talking about food after all today, right? A simple recipe that is my go-to appetizer that's full of flavor and is always a guest favorite. All right, in this week's Petit Pleasure, I'm going to tantalize your taste buds. This, like I said in the previous segment, is one of my favorite appetizers ad nauseum to the point where people pretty much know that if I'm going to have appetizers, I'm going to have this. But you know what? They don't seem to be complaining because they're always gone and they're really good. So um, they're so simple, though. I think that's part of why I love it. And they involve fresh ingredients in the summertime and into early fall, which is always good. But then again, you add cheese to it and everything's fine. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I haven't gotten to the name of the recipe. The recipe, <laughs> the recipe is simply basil mozzarella and tomato bruschetta or caprese bruschetta, um, because you're combining those three uh, iconic elements. So the ingredients are simply the freshest baguette you can get, so preferably that day, crunchier the better, sliced on the bias, all right? Then you want tomatoes, your choice, your preference. Um, For looks-wise, maybe get a handful of different colors of tomatoes. For flavor, I love heirloom tomatoes. Those are my favorite. Then make sure you have fresh mozzarella sliced. Make sure you have extra virgin olive oil. And if you can, get basil infused extra virgin olive oil. Just add that little extra flavor of basil since you're going to be using basil on the bruschetta. With the basil, you want to julienne it. All right, so get a few basil leaves and julienne it. And then, and this is the finishing ingredient, and I highly recommend you invest in this, top quality balsamic vinegar. If you don't have a balsamic vinegar that is thick like syrup, then I'm going to show you in the recipe um, steps how to reduce that so you can have it. It's very simple. All right. So you have all your ingredients. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. While the, uh, the, while the oven is heating up, slice your baguette. Take out a baking sheet or a jelly roll sheet and put down parchment paper. Put out your slices on the parchment paper. Drizzle a little bit of... EVOO or extra virgin olive oil on each piece, just a drizzle, don't cover it. Then place a slice of mozzarella on each slice. Once the oven is ready, go ahead and put the the baking sheet in the oven and you'll probably leave it in there between two to five minutes. So watch it carefully because all you're doing is waiting for that cheese to, to melt and to bubble. All right. And that really doesn't take that long. Once that's done, go ahead and take it out. And then you'll be able to finish and dress it up. While it's in the oven, what you can be doing is julianning the basil. You can also be chopping your tomatoes. If you need to reduce your balsamic vinegar, you can do that now as well. To reduce balsamic vinegar, take about a fourth a cup, put it in a small saucepan over medium heat, and let it sit there and simmer it, stirring it the whole time until it reduces to about a third of the amount. Doing this will cause the vinegar to be thicker and concentrate the flavor, which is exactly what we want. All right. So now that the mozzarella has been melted on the bread, you have your basil and your tomato ready to um, dress up those bruschetta. Let's do that. So on each bruschetta, put the basil, the sliced basil on each piece of bread with mozzarella. Then add about a tablespoon, depending on the size of your baguette slices, tablespoon of diced tomatoes. And then drizzle just ever so faintly a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette on each slice. And that is it. So simple. Serve immediately because you want them to eat them warm when the cheese is ooey and gooey. And pair with wine of your choice. I've served this year round and it never seems to be out of season. I know tomatoes are the best in the summer. um, But definitely something to keep in your arsenal for those simple little appetizers when you need them. Um, for a get-together, parties, or simply want a snack. 
All right. The recipe will be on today's show notes, www.thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast eight. So you can grab all those ingredients and, and uh, the directions on the show notes, as well as see a brief little image um, of my own cooking experience with those. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a recipe, or from time to time, introduce you to an expert who offers insight into how to live simply, luxuriously, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my new book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is available now in paperback, ebook, and audio versions on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, or wherever books are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, my new cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjourne!